In today's video, I'm going to show you how to pixelate 3D noises and also 2D images. And I had no idea that you could do this, but I just found out about a uh, function in the math node, which is really useful. And I've never really used it or seen it anywhere, but it's incredibly useful. And I've been starting to find uses for this. So for example, also this um, pixelation of 3D noise. But let's just hop into a new project and I'll show you how to make this. Uh, these files will be available on my Patreon, so you can go over there and download it. But you can also just follow the tutorial. I would love the support on there, so I can continue making videos like these. In our scene, we can just delete the light and the camera. We can set our render engine to cycles, since we are going to be working with volumetrics. That just looks a little bit better. And we can just delete the principal BSCF, since we don't need that. We can just add in a noise texture. And I'm also going to add in a brightness contrast node, just so when we plug this into the volume, uh, we have some contrast instead of it just being gray like this. So it's doing that in the color and then the color into the volume. Just make sure there's nothing in the surface. Then up the contrast to something like 500 and brightness to minus 50 or minus 75 or something. This is just so you guys can see what's going on. So we have more visible blobs and less stuff in the middle. When you're using this, you can just pixelate it normally without this, but it's just uh, for viewing. First, we are going to need a texture coordinate node since we want to uh, manipulate this in giving our uh, noise the wrong information and thinking it should be pixelated. So if we just hit Control Shift Left Mouse button, we can preview this nice generated gradient, which is actually made out of uh, three different values just from zero to one to visualize this i can add in a separate color node and if i place this in between we can go over to the red channel which has some data here the green channel which has some data here and the blue channel which has some data here as you can see this is just the x y and z coordinates that is basically what a vector value is it's just three values combined into one uh, with color this value is going to the noise texture, which will then look at one of these values here. So it will take this color and then calculate what the brightness should be at that level. So to pixelate the entire noise texture, we just need to make sure that in our viewport this looks pixelated as well. So to do that, you might already think of making it sort of stepped, since if we look at these red, green and blue values, you can see they're basically like gradients. And what we can do is kind of make this step. So right now this is linear. So if I were to visually show you this, I can add in a plane. Let's say the top value here is one and here it's zero. So this will be black and this is white in the shader. This will correspond to this part and this part will correspond to here. And what we basically want to do is instead of having it linear like this, is having it stepped. Let's see if I can do this quickly. So like this. So to do that, we need to work with a new node, which is not really new, it's just a math node, but a function inside of there. And we also are going to use the vector math node. And just like I said, vectors are basically just three values combined into one. So this isn't any different to the normal um, math node. It just does three operations at once, so you don't have to separate by color and then do everything manually. So now we can plug the generated into the first vector. And then I want to change this add to snap. And then I can play with this increment. Let's say I want to have 10 steps. I can put the increment to point one. And basically what this will do is it will look at the value. As you can see, it uh, works right here. It will look at the value and it will look to see if it's anywhere around a round number. So for example, zero, one, two, and so on. And it will just snap to that. So either fully black or fully white. And then with the increment, you can also add in some kind of subdivisions or loop cuts in between, a kind of checkpoints where it will also check. So if I set the increment to point one, it will look at either zero or one or 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. If I set the increment to 0 0.2, it will look at 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and so on. And that's basically how that works. And if we look at the original versus the snap, it just looks pixelated. So we can plug this factor into the noise section and then preview this. 
and you will see it will be pixelated. Of course, this is really intense because we just don't have that much steps. So if we decrease this to something really small, like 0.1, we will have more resolution, for example. The values you need to use for this are really, really tiny. So I recommend just adding in a combined XYZ node and then with a math node set to divide and set the value to something like 100 and just place this into all of these values. We can now just change this value and it is just a little bit easier to work with since you can hold shift and control and things like that. But yeah, I've never really seen anyone talk about the snap function, uh, but it's extremely useful and I've started to find a lot of uses for it. So for example, I can also use this to pixelate a image texture. So if I just import one of those, let's say I have this image and we can just delete the principled PSDF again since we don't need it. We can also pixelate this image just in the same way, but with the normal math node. Just in the same way, but a little bit different since we have a different aspect ratio. So if we were to just do the same thing, factor math, adding in a snap function, and then incrementing this really small, so 0 0.005, for example, this will be pixelated, but the pixels will be stretched, which is not really what you want. You need to uh, play around with that a little bit. So what I thought of is just um, combine X, Y, Z. And then if I set this X value to, for example, a 16, and then the other one to nine, it will have a 16 by nine value. Of course, these are too big of values. So we need to divide them again. So to fix that, we can add in another math node again, setting this to divide. And now we have really beautiful square pixels. We can then add in a value node and add those to the value. So we can change it with one slider. All right, so to finish this up a little bit, to make it more usable, and this will be on my Gumroad as well, you can just select everything, hit Control G to make a group. Then we can just take the value here and with Control, you can just drag these off, put that into the group input, make sure it's only one. In the group here, we can delete the other one. And now we have created a group, but we also want to, of course, change the resolution sometimes. So we can add in another math node. Uh, so we can just multiply this by 10. So when we eventually put in 16 here, for example, uh, it will become 116. Make sure it goes into the right sockets. I have connected everything weird. All right, like this. So now we can just input our aspect x value here which will be 16 and then it will multiply by 10 so 160 and that will go in the value and do the same over here with the x aspect y default value should be 9 and we can call this amount and that should be it just tab back to go back rename this to pixelate and in the aspect we can put in 16 and then 9 and we have nice square pixels just in one node which you can use. I've also done the same for the 3D pixelate and that's available on my Patreon. So yeah, I hope you found this useful. I hope you learned something about the snap note. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.